Sora is an AI video generator created by OpenAI that enables you to create videos using only text prompts. So creating a video is as simple as typing out a description of what you envision. For instance, entering a prompt such as a cat playing the piano, that would generate a video illustrating that scene. Sora is a super user-friendly platform. In this video, I will guide you through step-by-step, step, and by the end, you will know exactly how to use it. So let's get right into it. So first let's go to Sora.com and this is the homepage. On the left hand side here, you will see the explore section. This is where you can find inspirations. And under recent, these are the recent videos that have been created by the members of the community. And you can see all types of videos that are being generated. It's a really, really cool tool. And under featured, these are the featured videos that you'll be able to see. This is another great place to see amazing videos that have been created by other people. And when you find one that you like, you can click on it and then you can see the exact prompt that was used to generate this video. So here we are looking at an adorable pit bull jumps on one of those hoverboards from back to the future and kicks down the road smiling and pulling tricks. So when you see something that you like, this is a good way to learn the prompt. So you could use a similar prompt to create your own video. And if you want to find a similar video, what you can do is to go back to the previous page. You can also hover over the video and click on this button right here to search for a similar video. So you can click on this. So as you can see here, these are all the different videos that are similar to the one that you like. And to save a video, you can click on the save button. We can click on this button and then it will go to your save tab. So we can come to save and there we go. That was the video that we just saved. And under library, this is where you can find all of your video generations. There is all videos, there's favorites, and also your uploads. You can also create folders here on the bottom for better organizations. So let's create our first video. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see the composer. This is where you can write in your text to describe exactly what you want to create. So let's go with a large brown bear is skillfully snowboarding down a snowy mountain slope. So before we create this clip, we can review the settings. So these are all the options you have for the settings. You can upload an image here. You can add a style presets. So these are all the different presets that you could choose. You can change the aspect ratio. So 16 by nine would be landscape. One by one would be a square and nine by 16 would be like a vertical format. You could choose the resolution. I will just stick with 480p for now for this example. You can change the duration of the video. So we'll just pick five seconds for this one. And you can also change the number of the variations that you get from this single prompt. So we'll just leave it at two. And this question mark here will tell you exactly how many credits will be used by creating a video at these current settings. So everything looks good. So we can just click on create video. And once you hit create, you will see the video appear in the library and it will begin generating. And it will usually take a few minutes. You can also see that it's generating from the activity tab here. When your video is finished, you can hover over any of the variations to watch all of them play back in real time. So you can just hover your mouse over the video and you'll see it play back. You don't need to click on it or anything. You can just hover over it. So you can determine which variation you like better. So I like the second one better. So therefore I'm going to click on this one. And after you click on it, it will bring it to the light box and you can use the arrow keys to see the different clips in the set. So this was the first one and I hit the arrow key and this is the second one. So once you find a generation that you like, you can build off of it with the editing toolbar. So at the bottom of the screen, you will see a number of different ways that you could edit this clip. You can revise the prompt and create a new video. You can view and edit the storyboard for this video. So we can click on this. So storyboard is the tool that gives you the control to direct actions in your scene. And at the top of the storyboard, you'll see these caption cards. This is where you can describe the settings, the characters, or actions that you want to happen at a certain point in your clip. And below is a timeline where you can sequence your actions in time. Also, you'll see the same options from the composer here at the bottom. So let's start by setting our scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a large brown bear is skillfully snowboarding down a snowy mountain slope. It's for a contrast with the white snow as it contrasts gracefully between tall pine trees, which are dusted with fresh snow. The bear's eyes are focused and its posture is agile, showcasing its surprising skill on the snowboard. The sun is shining bright, casting long shadows on the snow. So that is on the first caption card. 
So I'll come down here to the timeline and drag this second storyboard card to the midway point. This is about the two and a half second point. So in this card, I'm going to describe the next action. So I'm going to replace this with the bear leans into a sharp turn, snow spraying up around its board as it coughs expertly through the trees. So that's what we're going to go with. Now looking at the timeline, you'll notice that there's some space between the first card and the second card. And remember that this space is important to preserve because it gives Sora time to connect the first set of action with the second set of action. When the cards are too close to each other, it might be difficult for Sora to smoothly combine the two scenes. And when they're too far from each other, it might fill in more details than you would like between the two scenes. So it's really about finding the right pacing for your story to make the results as ideal as possible. So let's review the settings. We want this to be landscape, grade, 480p, 5 seconds, same thing with two variations. We're not using any presets. Everything looks good, so I'll go ahead to click on create. And it's been added to queue. And we are going to wait a few minutes for it to generate. Okay, now it's done. We can click on this and we can see the video. So these are the two variations. I like this one, so I'm going to click on this. So next we're going to go through each one of these editing tool. So we're going to start with recut. Recut lets you trim or extend any section of the video. So for example, if we like the first second or even the last second of the video, what we can do is to use recut to extend that part of the video. So let's go with the last second. So we can go to recut. So let's say we like the later parts of the video and we want this to continue. So what we can do is to just drag the beginning part in to let's say the midway point and we can drag this clip to the front. So this is what we have now. So starting here, this is a segment that I want to extend. So I'll leave the rest of the timeline empty to give Sora the ability to imagine the extension. So we can just click on create and it's been added to queue. And here's the result. So next we're going to talk about Remix. So Remix lets you describe any changes that you want to make. You can add, remove, or edit any objects in your existing video. So let's come to click on Remix. So let's go with variation one. So let's say replace the bear with a fox. So you simply describe the change that you want to make. And that change is pretty significant in this video. So looking at the remix strength, I think strong makes sense here. Uh, that is when you make significant changes to the original video. And when you make a less noticeable change, you could choose mild. And when you want to make a minor change, you could choose subtle. So the lesser the strength, the more of the original video that it's going to preserve. So in this case, I'm going to go with strong and I'm going to click remix. All right, so it's ready. So here we have the new video. So the bear has turned into a fox. So next we're going to talk about Blend. So Blend lets you creatively merge two videos. It's like smashing two videos into one. So let's see an example. So here we have a video of a salmon fish on a plate. So what we are going to do is to click on Blend and upload a video. So I'm going to upload a salmon sushi video. So here we have the two different videos side by side a salmon fish and a piece of salmon sushi. So here on the bottom, we see the two clips. So this is the first clip on the top, which is a salmon fish. And the bottom clip is the clip of the salmon sushi. So the curve lets you know how strong the influence of each video is at a given point in time. So the higher up the curve, the more influence the top clip will have. And the lower down the curve, the more influence the bottom clip will have. So you can adjust the curve if you want one of the clips to have a higher influence. For this example, I'll just leave it as default. They will have about equal amount of influence. So let's go ahead to blend these two clips and see what we are going to get. Okay, let's look at the result. Let's click on the first variation. So this is blend. And if you're not happy with the result, or if you want to try a different curve setting, you can always edit your blend and try again. So let's say if we adjust the settings, so the bottom clip, which is the sushi clip, will have more influence on the blend. So let's go with this, because I think that will turn out better. And let's try this and click blend again. So here we have the new blend. I think this variation has a smoother transition than the last one. All right, so next we are going to look at loop. So loop lets you repeat any section of the video seamlessly. 
So here we are looking at a pack of French Bulldogs running across a football field on a sunny day. So let's say if we want to loop this video, we can just come to click on loop. So here you see the video and you can also see the two handles that lets you adjust the section of the video that you will be looping. So dragging the handle on the right will adjust the end frame and dragging the handle on the left will adjust the start frame. So ideally you want to find a start frame and an end frame that is fairly similar. So that will help you create a more seamless loop. So let's stop right there and let's start over here. So if you're able to find a start frame and an end frame that could be somewhat similar, then under the loop type, you can go with short. But if the first frame and the last frame that you have is really different, then it might be best to use a normal loop type or even a long loop type. So that will give Sora more time in order to connect those frames more seamlessly. So for this example, I will use normal and it should work okay. And let's click on loop. Okay, let's click to watch. I think it might have worked better with a long loop. So let's go with long and let's loop this again and let's move this up. So it has a better angle and let's click on loop again. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think this one is the best one we have so far. So that's all for this video. This is how you can use Sora to create videos using AI. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next video.